Landover, how are you? Well, doing very well with all of you folks here okay. helping us out. I understand that you work for the um, uh, census? I am an assistant regional census manager with the U.S. Census Bureau here in Atlanta. Okay, could you tell me more what, what you do particularly? Well, uh, the regional office is headed by a regional director. The regional directors in turn has assistants in several areas of responsibility. Uh, I'm particularly one of his assistants in the areas of partnership and recruiting. Okay, when you say partnership and recruiting, can you elaborate okay. more? Okay, uh, the, there are two independent programs, but they work very closely together. Partnership is a program that basically is charged with the responsibility of promoting census awareness and encouraging census, census participation throughout the region. We do this by engaging the general population and particularly the leaders of the population groups, you know, where it be community-based organizations, faith organizations. Our partners could go anywhere from a black association president to a statewide or nationally recognized organization. Establishing partnerships so that they can help us promote census among the contingency. You see, we cannot do it alone. We need to work with those trusted voices, those people who already have established networks, those folks who have already established relationships with the community to help us spread the word. We'll provide, of course, guidance on how to do this. We'll provide assistance with handouts and you know all kinds of promotional items. But the bottom line is that we want to let as many people as possible know that the census is coming and that we expect them to participate in it. I see. That is in the area of partnership and census awareness. In the area of recruiting, of course, we're talking about a staffing for 57 offices that the Census Bureau will have in this region. And that's about 12 to 1,500 people per office. You know, when all this is said and done, through the life cycle of the census, we will have hired nearly 80,000 people in this region, in this tri-state area of Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. I see. How about California? California has its own region. Mm -hmm. There is a region right now in California, it's based on LA, and they are doing exactly the same thing that we are doing here. They are also in the midst of recruiting and have their own partnership program and have their own recruiting program. I see, okay. And um, one of the concerns is that about the immigration. Um, you know, uh, how do you cope with that? Well, obviously, you know, the immigration issue is a very visible issue and probably among our biggest challenge in the upcoming census. We have no idea where the scenario is going to be when census data arrive. But whether or not we have an immigration policy that satisfies all concern, or whether we don't have any policy in place, the bottom line is that anyone who has chose to live in the United States, documented or undocumented, needs to be counted in the census. Because we're not talking about legal status, we're not talking about, you know, the, uh, the, the, the whether it's pro or against the legal legalization. We're talking about resources that will be shortchanged to that community every time an individual fails to be counted in the census. All the billions of dollars that are allocated to the states and consequently to the neighborhoods of America and to the communities of America based upon their needs are based on census official results, on census counts. So if they don't participate in the census, they become invisible. And in some ways, they're not only hurting themselves, but shortchanging the rest of the community. Can let me give you some specific examples. Every time the school year begins, the Board of Education and the local authorities has projected for X number of kids. And a number of schools are established, a number of uh, classrooms are established. And Always you see that the overcrowding phenomenon shows up in the first week in school. And they have to immediately supplement these uh, classrooms with trailers, park, or 
or, or you know, the improvised uh, units where we can house the kids. Why? Because obviously that particular community failed to count every children that is supposed to be projected for and accounted for so we can plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. And that's just a very visible example that you can identify with, that you can probably recognize because you see them in the news or you have experience it yourself in your family. Mm -hmm. But the same thing applies to schools, to public transportation, to roads and bridges and infrastructure that is to be maintained or repaired, rebuilt. If we don't have the needs documented in census results, if we don't have the numbers of people and their characteristics reflected on census results, we cannot plan for it. And the, and the sad part of it is that we're not going to have another chance to correct that until 10 years later when the next census comes in. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the reason why it's adamant to convince people that they need to be counted in the census. Mm -hmm. you know, without regards to the naturalization uh, papers or the documentation, you know, for the, uh, being a legal resident or a documented resident. All we have to do is make certain that we are in the numbers, that we are in the in, in the count, and that we reflect on this count and mm -hmm. these statistics. But you also do annual census. How, how would this differ? Well, we don't do necessarily annual census. What, what we are doing for the first time is that in this particular census exercise, we are utilizing one form that we call the short form. It's a very uh, limited 10 questions that are asked on this short form. And what we use to gather additional information, more detailed information that we use to call the long form, is not going to be used as part of the census exercise. It's been trans uh, passed to an annual survey, actually it's a monthly survey, that we do call the American Community Survey. And that is taking place of collecting information that would otherwise have been collected in the long form. Mm -hmm. I see, okay. So on the annual uh, census, what is it actually um, that you do exactly? Well, let me, let, me, let me correct that again. You know, it's not called an annual census. It's mm -hmm. called an American Community Survey ah, okay. that is done on a continuing basis. And what we ask on that survey are the same questions that we are normally asking on the long form of the census. So in a way, the American Community Survey is very much part of the census, except that that is an ongoing exercise, you know, that continuously goes back to the communities and ask questions. We have a sample base of about three million addresses mm -hmm. that are visited, contacted each month to maintain that information on a flow basis. I see, all right, okay. Thank you, Mr. Manuwar. Okay, yeah, bye -bye. thank you for your interest in the census. Mm -hmm.